of Genesis says that God created heaven and earth in seven days. Well, every seven days, we move heaven and earth to bring you the greatest show in the history of the universe. <laughs> you know, but we're only mortals, so this is the result, basically. But, you know, considering the budget and the talent, it's not bad. And here he is, the most not baddest guy of them all, the star of the Red Green Show, and my uncle, thanks so very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Red Green! Thank you, Harold. Thank you, and uh, welcome to Possum Lodge. Harold, I notice you have kind of a biblical theme going there. Yes, I do, and it's all leading up to some nifty creations from my miracle box here. <laughs> that was a miracle, wasn't it, Uncle Red? I don't think so, Harold. Miracles tend to be kind of good things. I would put this in the, in the category of pestilence and famine. <laughs> well, we had a great week up at the lodge. We had the, uh, we had the Possum Lake Regatta going here, which is a huge boat race. It's opened to all, all classes, all lengths and everything. Uh, we probably had about uh, 45 sailboats, I guess, on the lake from, uh, from Possum Lodges all over North America, vying for the coveted uh, Windy Possum Trophy. <laughs> I'll tell you, I haven't seen that much canvas flapping in the breeze since they served chili at the toga party. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'll tell you, we won it again. Uh, Moose Thompson and uh, Stinky Peterson uh, came in first place uh, and defended our unbeaten winning streak of uh, one. Oh, yeah, that was quite an accomplishment. They won by taking the lodge water skiing tow boat that had, like, a 400-horsepower outboard on it. <laughs> yeah, all right, well, we did have a few complaints, but, hey, a loophole is a loophole. We may have to tighten up the rules for now. Next year. Oh, and once you eliminate power votes, you might also want to consider taking out like boarding parties and shooting flares in the competition sails. Well, what do you have left, Harold? Just a bunch of sailboats racing against each other. Uncle Red, yachting is not a contact sport. Well, then we've improved it. <laughs> anyway, the guys really, really enjoyed the regatta. We did well in everything except uh, whitewater rafting, finesse docking, and, and sportsmanship. But I'll tell you about that a little later in the show. That was a cue, laser face. Oh, sorry, I was joking off. I'm back. Well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Harold, you got any sixes? <laughs> Go fish. Bill, William. You have any fives? getting too rich for me. I think I'll go for a ride in the RV. Anybody interested? Anybody want to come along, go for a little burn in the car in the RV? Who's up for it? Huh? Be a lot of fun. Who's there? Who's coming? Harold? Bill? Coming? <laughs> Bill, wait, come on, you want to go for a little run, don't you? Red, I know you're always ready for it. <laughs> uh, well, actually, it's, a, it's uh, what, what's today? Oh, yeah, well, it's, today's the day I go by myself. I got to give her a little solo burn, do a little lone wolf thing, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> but you guys have a little fun playing your little card game here. Douglas, I'll go for a ride in the RV? No. <laughs> well, you can't come anyway. Douglas, would you like to play fish? I don't gamble, which is more than I can say for a helmet here. What? I just saw the canoe. Oh, yeah, sorry. Sorry? Sorry? You turned a piece of lodge equipment into scrap metal and you say, sorry? I wanted to go whitewater rafting and we don't have a raft, so I took the canoe. Now we don't have a canoe. What did you do, go through a hydroelectric plant? <laughs> and stuff happens. Yes, it does. Stuff happens. And then stuff gets replaced. Now, you are going to buy us a new canoe, and you are forbidden for three months to use any lodge equipment, and you have to have a bath and a shave. Mm, I don't like your tone. You know, Douglas, lots of us dent boats and stuff from time to time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Red, this is not dented. It's shredded. It's mangled. I would have thought you'd been happy that I was alive. I am. It would take a lot longer to sue your estate for damages. Now, I'm giving you 24 hours to come up with the money. Picking apples, picking apples, down at Nash's farm. I climb up the highest branch, I get a Spartan and a broken arm. One apple, 
Two apples, three apples, four apples, five. I never knew you were going to get that many apples in your mouth and still be alive. Eating apples, eating apples, some from every tree. The neighbor yells, hey, those apples have worms. It's OK, so do we. <laughs> Corner. I'm going to show you how you can make do and just use what you have. For example, I was uh, I was going through town the other day and uh, I saw a whole bunch of these uh, blue boxes out in front of people's houses filled up with tin cans, and they were just lying there. You know, I mean, it just made my head spin. And of course, I see that many tin cans in my mind. I got the kind of mind that just starts rolling around with the ideas. Uh, the first one being to just uh, grab up the boxes of cans and throw them into the van. You know, nobody nobody stopped me or nothing. And uh, I got I would say maybe. 50 or 60 of the boxes and probably around 8,000 cans. You know. <laughs> so I thought we'd just show you what you can do with stuff like that. Uh, now, uh, save the boxes uh, for next week. We're going to show you how to make a pontoon boat. Uh, but for this week, we're going to show you what you can do uh, with the cans. Okay. Now, I mean, there's the, all the obvious stuff, you know, ashtrays, uh, drinking cups, uh, soap dishes, uh, jewelry boxes, uh, eyeglass frames, uh, <laughs> say, uh, change purse or safety boots or even portable urinals. <laughs> but I'd like to concentrate on uh, some multi-can projects you can do uh, using the handyman's secret weapon. Uh, duct tape. Okay, so we roll a bit of this off. Stick it down, sticky side up. Sticky side up, important lesson in life. Take two cans roughly of the same size. You join them together like so, and just roll it onto the, onto the duct tape with the, going right on the seam. You know, duct tape's fantastic. You can glue anything with duct tape. Uh, it'll glue uh, wood to plastic, or metal to glass, or uh, doors to cars. Uh, then you just repeat this process with a third can of added on here. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you could glue pudding to air with duct tape. <laughs> wouldn't that be something? Big dollop of butterscotch pudding just hanging in your foyer. <laughs> Good to see you, Mom. Come on in. <laughs> OK. <clears throat> there we go. You're right. It's a chair leg. <laughs> OK, now uh, we need a seat for our chair. So put down a strip of duct tape again. Sticky side up. That'll get you through so much of your adult life. <laughs> that down there like that. And then you take the cans. Boy, you know, duct tape sticks well to fingers, too. And uh, put the cans on the tape just uh, a couple inches apart. Just slap them on like that. Now, these are cans of approximately the same size, but there again, get creative. Once you've done that, you just uh, grab the end of the tape and you start uh, rolling her up. Oh, uh, I bet every one of these cans could, could tell a story, don't you? Huh? I mean, if cans could talk. Life's funny like that, isn't it? I don't know if you'd want cans to be talking, you know. What would cans say about you, do you think? <laughs> if cans could actually uh, talk. Then you bring that up, bring that around. And uh, there's a seat for your chair. Mind you, you're going to want a small can to sit on that. <laughs> and there you have it. Who says it's hard to make furniture? Is that not an attractive aluminum lawn chair? Just picture yourself sitting out on that in the sun, and after you have a few drinks, you got enough cans to make yourself a footstool. <laughs> you know, uh, something else you can uh, make with tin cans for the kids. And I'll tell you, you get the sound of the youngster and you have them uh, roller skating on any kind of a concrete surface and uh, the noise level gets to the point where you got to talk to them with uh, sign language there. <laughs> but uh, on the other hand, you know, you always know where your kids are. Uh, I mean, if that's important to you. It's, uh, what we're talking about here is really uh, imagination. You know that, that English writer uh, Samuel Johnson, he one time said, uh, uh, if it wasn't for imagination, a man would be just as happy in the arms of a chambermaid as he, as he was in a duchess. <clears throat> He's dead now. Uh, but no, uh, I'm just trying to use my imagination, and I'm imagining that we take these tin cans and uh, make ourselves uh, an eavesdrop, huh? <laughs> so we take a can like this, and uh, we just cut the can in half. <laughs> 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 
All right, that's not going just quite as well as I planned. So uh, <laughs> why don't we switch over to uh, the handyman's favorite uh, power tools? All right, uh, tin snips. Huh? Let's cut right through these. It's just a matter of using your imagination. Uh, it's like uh, Samuel Johnson said to Lord Chesterfield, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <clears throat> he was horsing around with Lady Chesterfield at the time. <laughs> Now poets have an interesting life, don't they? <laughs> Let's give it a go. <laughs> oh, excuse me a minute. Everything you touch, you wreck. I do not. It is summer. The dog lies motionless on my front porch. This is strange because I don't have a dog. Nor do I have a front porch. Obviously, one of us is not home. I tell you, this uh, whole situation with Helmut and the crumpled canoe has got the whole lodge uh, buzzing, you know, because uh, if Douglas pushes this too far, it could set a real dangerous precedent where people would actually be held responsible for uh, things they wrecked. Well, I don't know. I think maybe people should be responsible for their inabilities. Uh, these self-appointed uh, experts are dangerous. I say more power than Douglas. For example, the producer and director of the show would be held accountable for the look and the pace and, and, and of course, the audience ratings. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, I do the best with the talent available. Well, Harold, we could just replace you with someone more talented. <laughs> okay, all right. You know what? I think. You know what I think? I think that people like Douglas should be held accountable for the lack of money in the lodge treasury. Ah! How about that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought you'd come around, Harold. Yeah. Okay. Here's what I think. I, I think what you should do is uh, we should. Uh... Sorry, Uncle Red. There's no time for that. Not if I'm in control of the pace of the show and everything. Gotta go. <laughs> That's not me, right? This is me here. <laughs> That's just a little decoy I rigged up. Keep the looters away from the RV. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a scarecrow thing, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Looks just like me, don't it? Doesn't even move. It's perfect, man. Huh? <laughs> Say, Glenn, uh, can you fix a canoe? Well, uh, let's see. Well, you're a lodge brother and all, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll have to charge you 10 bucks for the estimate. <laughs> well, all right. Yeah, all right. Come on, take a look-see. All righty. <laughs> Where's the canoe? Oh, this is it right here. Has Helmet been going over the falls again? Yeah, yeah. Boy, he must know everything there is to know about gravity, huh? So, uh, can, you, can you fix it, Glenn? Oh, no, this is a write-off, Red. Yeah, you might be able to find an art gallery or something might be interested, but... Uh... Uh, oh, well, that's it, too bad, eh? Yeah, well, that'll be 10 bucks, Red. Oh, yeah, yeah. Say, Glenn, uh, you know, uh, instead of paying you the ten, you think I could do something, you know, maybe clean up the, the RV or something, you know, rather than cash, you know? Well, you know what, yeah. Uh, actually, she needs an oil change, right? right. So uh, maybe you just jump under there, yeah. pull out the oil plug, yeah. uh, let it drain into the lake, though, because it makes a hell of a mess right here. Oh, yeah. All right. And uh, I'll go get some oil. Okay. It's a good idea, right? Yeah. yeah. Hey, Red! <laughs> Somebody
somebody just took off in your van. <laughs> I guess you want one of my scarecrows now, don't you? <laughs> but hey, just tell me when you need the oil, right? It's right behind you there. Harold's Frisbee uh, stuck up a tree, uh, gave us the subject for this week's Adventures with Bill. There he is, uh, all set to help us get the frisbee down. The first first plan is not going to work. <laughs> plan B, subsection four, climb a tree that has no branches on it. Let's think this through once in a while, can we, Bill? <laughs> now, when he, when he made that gesture, I thought he wanted me to do it, and I thought, no, he wants my... Well, <laughs> Okay, all right, I would, yeah, that is what he meant. All right, and then this doesn't, this, Bill's not light. <laughs> all right, he's going to just knock it down with a stick. Why did we start with this? Oh, wait, oh, it's, he hit it. It went up. It actually went up and said it, no, oh, uh, no, oh, man, it's way, they were up there, 50, 60 foot tree, and way, way, now what do we do, Bill? That Bill never gives up, unfortunately. <laughs> So he tied this rope around himself, and he's going to throw the end of the rope through the fork in the tree, and then I'll pull, I pull down on the rope. But what happened was it hit the van, and then the, the loot that was in lasso not caught around the trailer hitch, which we didn't notice. So I started pulling down on the rope and uh, trying to pull Bill up the tree, and what neither one of us realized was that Harold had decided to take the van into town and buy himself a new Frisbee. And what he was doing, of course, was pulling the rope. up the tree and came back down and the van's still gone. The good news is <clears throat> we got the frisbee back. You okay with the plug, huh? Uh, beautiful day. is kind of divided into, into two camps on, on, on this thing with the canoe. Uh, on the one hand, there's people who think that helmets shouldn't have to replace the canoe or even repair it. They think that anybody who can, who can turn a, an actually a metal boat inside out, you know, that's something to be admired, even with a, with a little tinge of fear. <laughs> and then in the other camp, you have the pay-as-you-play people, which is mainly Douglas. You know, actually, Uncle Red, Douglas has convinced Moose Thompson to support him. Wow. wonder how he got Moose on his side. Maybe he removed a thorn from his paw. <laughs> the moose can sway a few votes. That guy's got fists like tractors. Oh, I'd change my vote. <laughs> you know, if I had one. You know, this is going to make the lads think twice, I'll tell you. It might even make you think once, Harold. How do, how do you mean? When it happens, you'll know. <laughs> well, either, uh, either Moose Thompson has just persuaded his uh, first uh, lodge member, or that's the call of the meeting. No, that's the call of the meeting, all right. Come on, Uncle Ray, let's get down there and see what's going on. I wonder if any of the Lodge members are intimidated. <laughs> well, uh, there's going to probably be some uh, nasty language and some violent threats and uh, a lot of uh, crisis and conflict and uh, all kinds of horrible things going on down there, so I really don't want to miss this. Thank you, Red. Well, everyone, I have some excellent news. Oh, I've discovered, thank you, Harold, I've discovered why our treasury is empty. Whoa, that's okay. This is a list of all the things that Helmet has broken over the years. When I totaled what he totaled, it came to 20,000. Dollars or things? Uh, uh, dollars. 10,000 things. Well, maybe if I made a list of all the stuff I fixed over the years, that'd come to 20,000 too. I think not, Helmet. Half the items on this list, you wrecked by fixing them. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Helmet fixes a lot of things around here. Like the pump? He fixes the pump. And we all know how expensive plumbers are, right? Oh! <laughs> Helmet, 
you're a menace. <laughs> Uh, well, now, um, I feel very strongly, and more importantly, uh, so does Moose Thompson over there. Thank you, Moose. <clears throat> that Helmet should reimburse the Lodge for damages. I'm really surprised you're going along with this, Moose. We apply this rule to you. You owe us for seven beds, a hundred chairs, and a wall. Well, uh, actually not, Red. Uh, you see, in order to get Moose's support, uh, I made an immunity deal with him. Well, hold it, hold it, hold it. Let's put some common sense into this, all right? This is stupid. I mean, this is, this is really stupid. This is dumb. Look, I make a living out of fixing things that you guys broke, all right? So if, if you take that away, you bankrupt the only marina on Possum Lake. I mean, that's dumb. That's just stupid. Well, no, wait a minute. We'll still need repairs. It's just now the members will pay instead of the lodge. Oh. So I might get paid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Uh, I'm for it. I'm for it. No, 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 wait. Now, Glenn has a very good point here. Oh, no, no, Red, just forget what I said. Just move on, Red. That's okay. That's okay. Now, but Glenn, you see, if people have to pay for stuff that they break, they'll, they'll start being careful, and they'll, they'll start not using stuff, right? And then there won't be any damage for you to repair. Oh, uh, well, that, that's actually what I meant. That, that sounds like what I meant. I, it was stupid. Just dumb. Just stupid. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> You don't fix anything anyways. We've got a 14-foot lapstrick that's been in for repair since 1952. It'll be ready Tuesday. Night. Uh, Wednesday morning, early, maybe. Uh, morning. Well, why don't we put this thing to a vote? Yeah. Huh? All those in favor of the members like Helmet here being charged for whatever they break, say aye. Aye. <laughs> All opposed, say nay. 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 Sorry, Douglas. <clears throat> well, it, it, it was close. <laughs> right. So if there's no other lodge business, okay, Bill, I'm going to call on Helmet here to give us the evening's entertainment. All right. Thank you, Red. Thank you. So, I was white water rafting. I wish I had brought my mom there because we were going over the falls and it came over the canoe bent up. You know, uh, listening to Douglas and Helmet present their cases to uh, 46 normally slack jawed individuals uh, who listen and in some cases comprehend them, and, and then cast their votes as their hearts and, and their conscience dictated. And I couldn't help but think that if we had a TV and a good football game was on, none of this would have happened. <laughs> Men are like gas, they fill the space available. <laughs> anyway, if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting and I'm, I'm feeling kind of wide awake, so why don't we hit the sack early? <laughs> so, until next time, on behalf of uh, Harold and myself and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. You know, so I, I was like going like this with my hands and I kept on scooping little kids out of the water. And it, it's difficult, you know, to move the boat through the water like with your hands open like that. Helmet, you're, you're tracking mud on the carpet there. Uh, anyway. Anyway.